Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about movies. So the new trailer for the D&D movie was released, I guess last week, and there was a million reaction videos to it. And I made a joke saying I should make a video about my reaction to reaction videos. And, you know, we had a little conversation about it. But what it did make me think about was the idea that how much movies affected my especially early play in D&D, where I was a kid and we were coming up with ideas. We didn't have a lot of money for the modules that TSR created. So we usually made our own adventures and what movies kind of inspired me, you know, watching HBO late at night, that kind of stuff. So I thought I would talk about that. This could be useful for people who saw the trailer and are like, um, that's not really for me. Maybe these movies would suit you better. Or for those people that saw the trailer and are like, yes, oh, but it's next year and you can watch these in between. So this is in no particular order. It's just a few movies that I like. And I think you might like too. So the first one I'm going to mention is probably my favorite movie. I'm going to say this about all of them. <laughs> from that period, I watched it a million times. It is The Beastmaster from uh, 1982. This movie is, uh, there may be some spoilers here, but I'm not going to go crazy. It follows, you know, the hero. It's got a very classic thing. It's got really weird and, and kind of unclean magic, for lack of a better word. It's got cool animals. It's got a warrior who has to kind of build his way up to to eventually fight and destroy an evil priest. It's very Conan. It, it's funny the uh, the book The Beastmaster by Andre Norton, which is also very good, is not at all like this movie. So <laughs> when I, I picked up the book years later because I realized it was from a book and I read it and I was like, oh, this is cool, but much different. It's more of a sci-fi book. But anyways, <laughs> The Beastmaster is a great movie. It's got everything that you might need to set up for a kind of a classic D&D campaign. It's not super high magic, which probably <laughs> tells you a lot about the ways that I create stuff today. In the early 80s, and I guess in the 70s as well, but I wasn't playing then, D&D hadn't really set itself up as its own genre. Like when we think of D&D today, and you get this with this modern trailer, you've got all the like displacer beasts and gelatinous cubes and all these things that are, you know, owl bears, all these things that are D&D, right? It's like they're, the genre of D&D is what this movie is about. But in the early part of D&D, it really didn't have, it was almost like the old sci-fi magazines, like Weird Tales, things kind of mixed and crossed and this and that. And this next movie is called Krull. So Krull is kind of a sci-fi movie, but there's guys in armor and swords and they ride horses and there's monsters and there's kind of magic and there's kind of technology and it's really cool it's got an epic quest that the you know it's timed so people are like that kind of stuff it's just a fun movie it's weird and interesting and it shows how different types of reactions can be had for instance again this is kind of a spoiler they get attacked by bandits at some point but because they're a small party and probably can't defeat the bandits they negotiate with them and try to get the bandits to help them on the bigger quest for a, a greater goal. Thus showing that not everything is just somebody jumps out of you, you have to stab them until, or they stab you until one of you falls, right? These things can happen. And even in big epic quests with massive heroes, sometimes you find yourself in the need to make alliances, to interact with people, and to go after the joint enemy, if you will. Oh, I'm also going to say that the Cyclops, and I'm going to spoil this, the Cyclops in Krull is one of the best, in my opinion, like unique race is that I've ever seen. Like the idea behind it, the way it is, it's, it's very cool. Okay, here's a, a movie that I actually based an adventure that I run at conventions on, Dragon Slayer. This is from 1981, and it's one of the probably one of the earlier fantasy movies I watched. Basically, you've got some people requesting the help of a wizard to slay a dragon. The wizard is killed, and the wizard's apprentice, first level character, decides, I'm going to do it. I have some magic items. I'm going to go and help these people and slay a dragon. And, yeah, it's interesting. There's politics in it. There's uh, there's a bit of religion also mixed in, which is kind of interesting. I didn't pick up as much as a kid, but I got as an adult. It's a very, very interesting movie, and I love the idea of the dragon is like a force of nature and the dragon as, an, as a beast and an animal and not so much the dragon as an intelligent creature, which we often think of them now. I'm not saying that that's not also good, but I like the animalistic dragons that there's no talking to. The dragon is the dragon and it will eat you and it will destroy you if you don't bring its sacrifices. 
So Dragon Slayer, great movie, highly recommended. This one is, I think, the only one that I'm going to talk about that's rated R. Actually, I didn't check, but I'm pretty sure I know this one is rated R. It's got to be. The Sword and the Sorcerer. There's actually a shout out in a certain way to this in the new D&D trailer where one of the characters shoots the blade off their sword. It basically turns into a dagger uh, in the, the clip. In The Sword and the Sorcerer, though, he's got three blades on this sword. and It's just ridiculous. And, you know, looking at it as an adult and, and being like, would that even work? It, it no, but looking at it as a kid it, with a sword with three blades that two of them can shoot out, and it's it's awesome. I have to tell you that we had many three bladed swords that shot blades in our campaigns when we were ten years old. The sword and the sorcerer is so cool. Yes, I should not have been watching rated R movies when I was ten years old, but you know, you get up in the middle of the night to get a drink. You see, oh, watch a little HBO, or you plan on doing that when your parents are asleep. But in any case, this one is gritty it's the grittiest of all the movies all of the other ones are a little bit crawl's got a little bit of a dark vibe to it but this one is the gritty dirty you know horror-ish like combats and stuff this one i haven't watched in a long time it's the only one i really haven't watched in a long time i'm gonna watch it after i finish making this video but it is really cool because it shows another side of it it shows that gritty violent side and it's not kind of just kind of washed over like it is in a lot of the other movies finally so this doesn't go too long and i'm not going to talk about a million movies clash of the titans this is from 1981 they remade this movie and so this is kind of why i'm mentioning this one clash of the titans to me is probably the ideal setup for like a campaign or what we might call a micro campaign right maybe like 10 sessions there's lots of little components and parts to it that add up to the final confrontation the release the crack and i'm sure everybody knows that and this is one of those movies that they remade and much like the conan the barbarian movie that they remade i didn't like it the remake when it came out and later on like several years after i rewatched the conan one and you know it's fine i think that i you know you have in your head right because you remember what it was like so you automatically dismiss the new movie but the new clash of the titans Still not, no, for me, doesn't work. I don't like their attitude towards the gods and that whole thing. And, I, and you know, it, it goes to show you how movies change. And this kind of brings us full circle back to the trailer. Movies are going to change over the course of time or ideas of movies based on the culture that they come up in. The D&D &D movie that they're making now is going to reflect what people now are doing in movies, how they're creating movies, movies that are popular what they think the the young people that they want to bring into the movie are going to want to see. And I think that much like these old sword and sorcery movies that I watched when I was a kid and it really inspired me to play D&D &D and to get my friends to play D&D, &D, this new movie will hopefully do that for a future generation. Anything out there that's fantasy that's going to bring people in is just going to be great for the hobby. So there you go. That's my not review of the D&D &D trailer because there's plenty of them out there. You can check out lots of people talking about the trailer and telling you what monsters are in it and stuff. Go for it. Watch these movies, or if you've seen them before, let me know what you think of them. If you've seen them when you were a kid, and let me know what you thought, and then go watch them and come back and leave another comment about when you watch them as an adult. Because I think that all of these, the five I think I mentioned, they all hold up. I mean, like I said, I haven't watched Sword and Sorcerer in a long time, but from what I remember seeing parts of it, I think that one's going to hold up as well. There's other movies that probably don't hold up as well. Uh, these ones are good. So check them out. Let me know what you think. Do you ever run campaigns that are like any of these movies? Let me know. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you get notifications, and I'll see you next time.